which is mobile software development. And um, you're all certainly invited to come. Um, I think there's a registration, um, but you know, show up anyhow, even if you didn't register. Um, it will be in Spitzer at six o'clock tomorrow evening. Yeah. Uh, so six six to seven. Uh, Paul Norad will be there. I'll be there, and um, a, a fellow that does mobile, that's done some mobile development, uh, will, will be there as well. And we're, we're there just to talk about that field and to sort of introduce our program. And I, I think it'll be a good uh, a good session. Obviously, the you know computing has as you know the trend has been you know almost you know it's almost like that Daft Punk song, right? Uh, Stronger, faster, <laughs> smaller, <laughs> however that goes. I'll get the words written on my arm for next time, and I'll do the little, <laughs> I'll do the little dance. Uh, yeah, right. There, there you go. Uh, but, but more importantly, I mean, I, I think the bigger idea, rather than focusing on the technology, is to focus on the fact uh, to what degree this has impacted our lives. I mean, from computing and, and say, you know. Not that long ago, I mean in, in geological terms anyhow, you know, from, this, from say the 40s on where as there were like, you know, three computers in the world and they just did calculations of scientific calculations because it took a person three weeks to do them and it could do them in a day maybe. I don't know, I'm just making those numbers up. But from doing that kind of very rigid sort of calculations to in the 60s where, where folks in the business world are like, hey, maybe we can do some stuff for our business, you know. Gee, accounting are our numbers too, right? Instead of crunching numbers for uh, calculating rocket trajectories, we can, we can crunch debits and credits. All right, so it became a little wider area that IT infiltrated. Then in the 80s, uh, you know, late 70s, early 80s with the PC revolution, you know, it's like, wow, well, maybe we can use these things in our home. And then with the web revolution, it's like, well, maybe we can connect everyone with everyone. And the guy looked like he was having a good time. Uh, and then he, I, you can tell he's pumped about the mobile presentation tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and then until finally, you know, with, with the development of laptops and netbooks and then handheld devices such as mobile phones, uh, smartphones, you know, it's infiltrated, or I, I guess infiltrated is sort of a negative word, but it has become part of our life to such a degree that it's unimaginable to think, you know, from where it's gone in, in, in people's lifetimes. I mean, we're not talking about over like 500 years or something. We're talking about over over 60, 70 years, you know, how it's been, you know, how, how it's so ingrained in our life, you know. You, you can't get uh, uh, an internet connection on your mobile phone. Some people break into a cold sweat, you know. <laughs> yeah, me too, you know. It's like, I can't check my email, you know. And again, the trend is going to be even more and more to where uh, there, there's, there's a, a phrase coined called the Internet of Things instead of the Internet of Computers. In other words, you know, um, your refrigerator knows when you're out of milk, <laughs> you know, or you're, you know, already you have some of that. Your car tells you it's time for a tune-up or an oil change. Uh, and, and this is just going to go increasingly, you know, your thermostat, you know, you know you're coming home so you can set your thermostat uh, from work to say, gee, I'm not feeling too well, I want it to be nice and warm when I get home, so I'll crank up, that sort of thing. You know, where, where it's not going to be, I'm going to sit down at my computer and do something. It's going to be the computers are just going to be, you know, there's a potential for them to be intergrained everywhere. And there's societal issues with that, to be sure, and there's technological issues, but we can see that's how things are sort of funneling down to where it's closer and more attached to our life. And again, the next big wave after the web is, is the mobile devices. So that's a presentation for tomorrow. Now today, oddly enough, we're talking about mobile web development. All right. Um, mobile web development, there's, there's uh, a, a few things I want to talk about. Um, part of your assignment is to investigate what makes for a good mobile web page. So I don't want to spill the beans completely and, and, and tell you everything. But I do want to point out a couple things, both from a design perspective 
and from a technical perspective. First of all, from a design perspective, what is the impact of viewing a, a web page on a mobile device versus viewing it on a computer or laptop screen? The whole web page won't fit on a mobile phone. Yeah. Number one is just the, the screen size. Right, the screen. Uh, th there's the there's a strong potential that um, a web page won't be able to be fully displayed on it, and will cause potentially uh, difficult scrolling. So there's that potential. All right. That of course is a biggie. As that's the obvious one. What's another design issue, perhaps, with mobile phones? Yes, uh, plug-in, plug-in, plug yeah, special effects. Um, you know, um, iPhone doesn't support Flash, uh, and so on and so forth. Other design issues. The last one I'm thinking of, and you could probably think of a lot of them, right? Um, you know, you don't click a mouse, you, you touch with your finger, and therefore, with my gigantic hands, Sometimes I cover 15 links by pressing on my phone and it's, it's difficult to, to hit the link I want. That's a design issue. Uh, depending how old you are and, and where you are in, in Darwin's evolution of humanity, for some people, typing on a touch screen or keypad is tedious. All right, so it's very difficult to, pardon me? You like swipe? Okay. Uh, but you know, some people can type very fastly with their thumbs. Uh, in fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was, a, there was a slang term for teenagers in Japan back a few, while, uh, a few years back. And I guess when you literally, literally translate it, it was like thumb tribe. In other words, they're the people that can type with their thumbs, the teenage kids uh, over in Japan. Uh, us older folks, uh, again, I still use one finger. Of course, I only use two fingers on the keyboard, so it's really not much of a difference uh, e either way. But anyhow, yeah, the input is different, so that's another one. But there's a more subtle design different, difference. And this doesn't have anything to do with how it looks or how you interact with. This has to, everything to do with your mindset and visiting the page, what your goals are. If you're browsing a website, from your mobile phone, are you likely to have the same goals as when you're visiting it from a computer? Think about it. Let's think about LC's web page. All right. What might you be interested in looking at if you're browsing the website from a mobile phone? Yeah, something very current, news. All right, that would be one possibility. Academic calendar, events, what's going on? Gee, when was that mobile software development uh, thing? Uh, anything else? Facebook. Oh, maybe Facebook, yeah, maybe get to that. Uh, the big one, th this winter I can see why it wasn't, uh, didn't jump to anyone's mind, but, but normally is school canceled, you know, when there's a snowstorm, you know. Now think about that. That's what you might use a mobile device for. Are you going to do, use a mobile device to, say, investigate degree programs here at Loyan Community? Probably not. I'd feel bad for you if you did. That would probably be a very tedious thing. And that's really no disrespect meant to our website, but it wasn't written with a mobile uh, page in mind. All right? So one important design consideration is that people visiting a mobile site are likely to have... Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button are likely to have different goals than people visiting uh, the full site. All right. Um, again, people uh, you know, on the go might want just some quick information as opposed to delving deeper into the content. I, I guess that's probably, in a general way to express it, the big difference between goals visiting a mobile site versus goals visiting uh, uh, the full-blown site. So for example, if I'm visiting CNN, I probably want to see the top headlines of the day. I'm probably not going to drill down and read in detail. You know, if maybe there's an election, I want to see who won the election. Or, or, or maybe I heard that, you know, uh, the Browns are having a press conference today and I want to see 
what they announced, or something along those lines, right? So you would probably be looking just for headlines if you're visiting a new site. You're not going to drill down into details. You're not going to do detailed research. If you're visiting, say, a site for a restaurant, you might want to know, you know, what the hours are, maybe the exact address, get directions, all right? But you're not going to necessarily apply for a job uh, using uh, the, the mobile uh, app, uh, the, the, the mobile uh, site for that. Uh, again, learning community, you might look to see if the campus is closed. You might look to see when a particular event is. You might look to find a phone number to call your professor. But you're not likely to look and try to compare the web development with the software development curriculum. All right. So that's a subtle thing to keep in mind. In addition to the platform being different and physically things look different, we also have the, the different mindset of people accessing it one way versus the other. Now, what are the strategies involved in creating a mobile web presence, I'll say, for your organization? There's, there's several of them, all right? And they run the range. And we'll talk about some of them and then some of them we'll talk about and actually show in action. One way of dealing with it this is a good one because this I suppose this is always an option for any problem you face but one option is to do nothing. <laughs> right? Yep. People can access our web page from their mobile phones. They got a browser, type in our address, and they pull it up. All right? Now, that may work for some organizations that have simple websites that aren't, um, aren't extravagantly designed, where there's not tons of content, and where you might just want to pull up, you know, a couple things uh, on it. But when you keep in mind the physical limitations of the phone, along with, um, along with the, um, along with uh, the fact that people are, go are likely to have different goals, then you see that that's probably not an approach you're going to want to take too often. Let me pull up an example of a page that I think works at least reasonably well uh, in a mobile environment and in a desktop environment. Someone took off the picture of the moon. Who did that? This is a friend of mine's website. She's a local ceramic artist. And there's her website. All right, there's some basic stuff. There's news, announcements about her upcoming shows. Ooh, a little bit of a bug there. Not a little, a little too wide. No, it should be floated. Events. And so on. All right. Looks respectable in the browser. And let's look at it in on a mobile device. My handy Droid X2, which I have publicly stated, if it were possible, I would marry it. I love this phone. I really do. This is easily my favorite phone I've had so far. All right. I probably I probably don't want to hear what the discussion is now. I I I immediately withdraw my comments. And and there we look at it, and you can kind of see it. It's not necessarily again great, but it'll do, especially for a small business like this. Doesn't have tons of money to go out and hire someone, you know. And especially with the little pinch effect, you can go in and you can see the links a little bigger if you need to, and so on and so forth. But it looks respectable. All right. So, well, that's not, certainly not always an option. That is an option to just do nothing. Your website, hey, you can, people can access it via the browser. You know, hey, you know. 
We're in business. Now again, that's not necessarily going to solve all our problems, though. We're going to have to do... Oh, thank you. We're going to have to do some work here, right? All right, so do nothing, relatively rare. Here's an option that a lot of places have done. Make an app for it. All right? Now, by an app, I mean a, a application, a little mini application you can download from the iTunes Store or Google Play or whatever the, the different places are that um, don't use a web browser, or at least don't explicitly use a web browser, but you download code to your page and it allows you to view in content that is otherwise on, on the web. For example, there's a Facebook app for iPhone, for Android, and so on. You're not really on the web. Well, let me rephrase that. You're not within a web browser, so you're not like running code within a web browser, but you're using a different application. I mean, you could consider the Facebook app as a very, very, very specialized web browser. Now, all it can get is Facebook, right? All right, so you can write an app. Now, what are the downsides for writing an app? <laughs> you have to actually write it, okay? And why is that a downside? Yeah, number one, uh, mobile app development is at the point where there's still, it's not simple. All right. Uh, you, you see, it's funny because I, I, I haven't done tons of either, but I've done some droid development, and that looks like a piece of cake to me compared to the, the, the iPhone. Is the, on Android stuff, the code for it, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier, but then actually getting it hooked up to the thing. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, that's, that's a distinct possibility. <laughs> now, so it takes some skill to develop a mobile app, and you're going to have a web page anyhow. Right? So this adds more tasks to your list. Now are you not only going to have to create a, a web presence and a, and a website, but you're also going to have to create an app as well. Or what? I, I don't know. I'm just confused. Like, why would you even like, want an app when you already have the mobile site? I mean, if you're on a mobile device, do you just access the site with the browser? I mean, I, I well, again. Uh, why would you, that, that's a good question, why would you want a app versus a, a, a site? Is it kind of like an accessibility thing? Because, like, if you notice, if, it, if I go up, like, into a, to, like, Google and search for the Facebook app, right. it's totally different, or Facebook, right. the page is totally different than using the app. It's more accessible than just to use the app. Okay. To All right. Um, that, that's getting on, uh, on, uh, on a good point. Uh, the, the, the same it was using the app is simpler than possibly using the web browser. All right. Keep in mind that we said in some cases do nothing is the good option. But in other cases, we're going to have to do something else to create a mobile web version. So the point is you're going to have to do something, right? So your choices are create a mobile version of your web page or create an app for it. Now what are the advantages of creating an app? The advantages of creating an app are that you can create something special for a platform and you can optimize for it and you can, you can write code that does exactly what you want it to do as opposed to living within the limitations of the web browser and its technology. All right, Especially considering that again Mobile browsers are kind of at the point that regular browsers were several years ago as far as compatibility and, and issues and all that. All right. So with an app, you can really focus people on the tasks that they want to do. All right. And you can make those simple and you can write native code to do that. You can write code just for that device and you're not limited to the functionality of a browser. All right. So I, I guess I would say that's the reason. In a way, it's almost like, I, I think I used the term uh, in discussions before, it's almost a curated view of the web. 
In other words, they control how to access it to make your life easy, right? Who, is the, who are the folks that, that popularize apps? Apple, right? And what's Apple's point? Well, Apple's point is we're going to make it easy for you to do what you want. We're going to make just a couple buttons to click and blah, 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 and that will control your experience. Um, folks that are really maybe more technical, they love the fact of the sort of wild, wild west of the web. that They can get on, they can do anything you want. You can go to this page, you can go to that page. A lot of people, they don't want to go, you know. All right, let's say I want to see what the weather is today. All right, I could open up my browser, type in weather.com or have it bookmarked and go to it or whatever, or I could fire up my mobile device Click the weather channel, and there you go. All right, there's today's weather. All right, you're not going to get that sort of simplicity on the web because you open up the browser, you're going to have to go to you know whatever, and you know either go to your bookmark or type in the URL or or whatever, and and you're not going to get that sort of simplicity. Yes. Yeah, you can, but again, the, again, and it's, it's funny when you discuss this with technically oriented people because <laughs> they have a lot of really good solutions, but again, remember, they're not designing for people that know these things. They're designing for people that, that don't know these things and aren't necessarily terribly sophisticated users. That I just want to download the weather channel and I want to press the button and see what the weather is. And again, sometimes developers speak disparagingly of users. That's what I want to do too, right? I'm a programmer and I don't want to jump through hoops to figure out what the weather is going to be. I want to press a button too. All right? Now, um, of course the issue then becomes, well, what if you wanted to go and find what the weather is going to be somewhere else? All right? Then maybe their app presents too narrow of a view. I've never done that because I never go anywhere, right? Uh, but assuming that you were someone that went somewhere, you might want to know, like, whether. Now, then the app might be limited, right? Because the app is just focused on doing that one thing, you know? And there's value in that approach. Now, the other downside of app is you're not going to write apps, app, you're probably going to write app right because you're going to write uh, at least a, 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 an Android version and a uh, uh, an Apple iOS version all right yes now when you're making like say you make an app for iPhone all right yes so would you have to make a, like another like CSS or something for uh, an iPad I mean or would it be like the same the, the I, iPhone and iPad yeah you can run iPhone apps on an iPad Uh, it'll, uh, yeah, I, I didn't bring my iPad in today. Normally what happens is if you run a app that was written for the iPad, uh, iPod or iPhone on your iPad, it shows up like phone sized in the middle of your iPad. But then there's a button that says 2x and it will expand to fill the whole, whole, whole screen if you wanted to. But then again, you know, you get some pixelization and, and that sort of thing. Yes? So in the development environment thing, they have like rewrite the same code for both of them and you can in the thing scale it for iPad. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, the, the statement was is that in the development environment you can write the same code and have it scaled for iPad versus, versus iPod. All right. But again, the, the trouble with apps is that you're writing apps for at least two platforms. Not even getting into the fact that there's different versions of Android and which one of those you want to support and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, are you interested in Blackberry? Are you interested in Windows phones? You know, and so on. Do you want to make a distinct iPhone versus iPad app? Uh, and again, the tool might help you do it, but again, that's still a consideration. But the good news is, is you know, this is a solution that's, that's generated custom for the platform. So ideally it should work perfectly and not have any of those messy issues like a plugin's not supported on the mobile browser or this or that or the other. All right? And it should be very focused at the goals of what to do. All right. 
So, there's a place for that. All right. Um, the other solution involves creating some form of a mobile website. And there's a couple ways to do that. All right. One way is to simply have two different CSS files for the same um, page and you render the page differently depending on the device that, that you're on. All right? Um, that's one possibility. Another possibility is doing some sort of uh, having two versions of the page and do some sort of switching or redirecting based on the device. For example, if you go on your device to CNN.com, Notice, I typed in the URL of, CN, of www.cnn.com. Notice what happens. Oh, I must have bumped the link. There we go. It redirected me to m.cnn.com. So there's internal redirection there to redirect my request. The server code is smart enough to recognize the platform that I'm on and send me to one web page versus the other. And notice this. It's not the full-blown CNN page. Let's go look at the full-blown CNN page. Yeah, some of, some of them do that as well. All right. We'll, we'll, we can talk about that in a second. All right. So, for example, here, compare that, the full-blown website, to... This, the mobile website. Less graphics, so it will load quicker. Um, really just focus on the headlines. It's narrow, so there's no horizontal scrolling. There's vertical scrolling, but that's okay. All right, as compared to this. Now, as one student said, a lot of times there'll be a link to say, do you want to go to the full site? Maybe there's something that you, you, you do need that, that's off the beaten path, and, and it allows you to do that. So that's, that's um, a, a possibility as well. Now, the problem with this approach is sort of the problem anytime you see doing two of anything, right? quickest way to make a software developer scream is to tell them they have to do something twice, <laughs> right? They don't want to do something twice. That's why you became a programmer. So you can program at once and you never have to worry about that again, right? In theory, right? But making two, two versions of the page, again, uh, is, is you, you, you have potential for issues with that. Now, through proper use of server-side programming techniques, you can mitigate a lot of those issues, and you can you can uh, you know you can ensure some degree of consistency. So, for example, the headline says the same thing on the mobile site that it does on the full site. All right, so you don't have two places where you have to update a headline. All right, but still, that is doing two things instead of one thing. All right, every software developer would rather do one thing than two things. All right. Um, and again, the, the switching or redirecting, yeah, is typically done on, on uh, the, through server-side code. It can detect the device that you're on and send you to one of two different places depending on what your device is. Now, the solution I want to show you, the other solution I want to show you 
is where I just have one web page, but I apply two CSS files to it. Okay? So that's different than having two web pages and switching between them. Right? Because two web pages and switching between them sort of implies that there's two different HTML documents. Right? And you're switching between them. Or two different server side documents. And, and, and you're switching between them and you're getting different content. This approach I'm talking about, there's only one HTML file. There's only one document. It's simply styled a couple different ways. So what I want to do, and this doesn't really show up well on the projector, but I want to show you one page that has two style sheets associated with it, and through some CSS rules, I can switch between what style sheet gets applied. And here's the page. You can't really see here, but these are links. That's okay, because the links don't work anyhow. But trust me, there are links there. All right. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's some Greek text. There's a copyright message. There's a war word full version indicating that this is a complete version. And then there's a headline. Let me show you what this looks like on a phone. I could, but at this point I'm a user and I don't want to play with that. <laughs> All right. Notice the differences. Number one, there's no color in it. It's just black and white. The content's the same. All right. There's a, he there's a heading that says Mike's homepage. One of the headings is different, though. It doesn't say full version. It says mobile version. There's still the three links. There's still my Greek text but they're in line and there's still my copyright message. But again, this is a one column page. This is a banner, column one, column two kind of page. So let's look at the code that does this. It's actually not that hard. Interesting thing though, I did have to tweak this a little bit because between last semester and this semester I got a better phone. So I had a bigger screen. So it, was a, it wanted to pull up the full size version on this screen because it thought the screen was big enough to support it. So I had to play around a little bit with the code to get it to work uh, today. Let's look at, at the code that does this. All right. Here's everything. Here's the four files involved. I have my HTML document. I have the image, which gets tiled. All right. Kind of hard to see on the screen. I then have two CSS files, one for the screen and one for a handheld device. I then have in here, code up here that is 
And the key thing is this. The media, we haven't talked about the media attribute for CSS, but you can apply a different cascading style sheet if you're printing something as opposed to viewing it, you viewing it on a screen, which makes sense, right? A page might have a nice little background graphic um, on the screen that looks nice on the page and, and, and really works well, but you won't, won't necessarily want to print that out. And when you print it out, you might just want to print the text. So you could create two style sheets, one for print, one for screen. Well, what, what was done in this example, and I think the link to the page, the resource I used for this is, is also in the, in the folder, is I applied a media of screen to the one style sheet and a media for, uh, uh, applied a media of handheld with a max device width of 480 pixels. Now, 480 pixels obviously is, is uh, less than this phone had. So I, I went and I actually adjusted it up to 800 pixels for, uh, to, to get the, the test to work this, this morning. All right. But what this does is this looks at the device and applies one of these two style sheets. If the screen size, if, if the browser identifies itself as being handheld, or the screen is less than its maximum width, it applies a mobile device. Now that's one thing that, again, there is inconsistent support because the browser doesn't always properly identify itself as being a handheld. Yes? So what happens uh, later on when phones start getting around the same resolution as computers? Then it will get, then it will get the regular screen. Okay. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened earlier today when I went in and viewed this because on my old phone, uh, I got the mobile site on my phone. On this one, when I pulled it in, I got the full site. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to do something different. Um, you you could again you could take one of the other strategies of redirecting them. Um, you could up the lower limit for the screen size. Uh, would be the two choices to do. Yes. My question is, you say you got your width set at 800 or whatever. Right. Now, does the, will the phone send a different width if you have it flipped sideways instead of vertical? That is a good question. Or does the phone automatically send the vertical width? Well, no, yeah, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you have your phone already set okay. horizontal, well, here, here, yeah, here, here, here's, here's the answer to your question. Absolutely. In other words, when I viewed the page in horizontal mode, I got the full site. When I go here and click refresh, I get the mobile site. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize it would do that, but in the software business, we say that that's a feature, right? Uh, you know, which, which makes sense. It, so it looks at the width when the page is loaded, and if the width is, if it's oriented landscaped, has a wider width, so it might catch it. If it's oriented um, portrait, yeah, then, uh, then then it won't. So yeah, good point. Let's take a yeah. Go ahead. Um, will that work like the same on both iPhone and Android? Because on iPhone, I think it scales the screen with the thing, and on the Android, it deletes the screen with the new view. Uh, will it work the same? Um, I, I couldn't guarantee that. You'd have to look at the browser. I know before when I tried to view this on the iPad, it always showed me the full site. All right. Um, so I don't know how the iPad browser would identify itself and how it would identify the width of it, but again, I wouldn't guarantee it. That'd be something you'd want to test, definitely. All right. Let's peek at these two style sheets just to get a sense of the difference between the two. Because, again, the key difference is there's no background image, uh, the colors are simpler, and um, one column as opposed to multiple column, and lastly, there's a different heading on the two pages. 
ooh, how do I do that with CSS? I'm not going to show you. It's my head. <laughs> you have to figure it out. All right. Now notice, this is the one for the screen. Now notice what I do. I, again, I have the body with the color of white and the background having my tile and all that. I have a container uh, that's that big and I have my navigation and I float it and I do all that to give the double column approach. But how do I make the mobile thing appear or not? I have a class that says mobile. And in this style sheet, anything that is mobile, I set the visibility to hidden for. All right. Gee, guess what I do on the handheld? Just the opposite. I make the mobile stuff visible and I make the full stuff hidden. And then I change the, 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 the parameters of those to make it a one column versus another column. This really is, is, this is, again, now this technique won't necessarily always work in every case. What, let, me, let me rephrase that. This technique is not always the best thing to do in every case because, again, depending and keeping into account that people, mobile browsers, people browsing the web with a mobile device have different goals, essentially what this does is it shows you the same page just styled differently. You may want a totally different page for a mobile device than, than that. So, but again, it's a tool in your, in your uh, tool belt of things that you can do. All right? So we're up to really, and there might be a couple extra, or there might be like a mix and match and variations of these things. But in essence, we can do nothing because our web page looks respectable in, in both modes. We can create an app or multiple apps, all right? We can make a page with two CSS files that effectively switches between them. By the way, getting back to your iPad example, if I were doing this, I, you could probably switch style sheets using server-side code instead of the CSS trick I did. And that probably would have a better chance of working because the CSS code depends more on the browser sending information uh, to it and if, if the browser identifies itself in a certain way that's what depends it. Uh, that's what it, it depends on. Whereas the server side code I think you'd have more things to look at with the request to identify and set it. So one web page, two style sheets or two web pages that you switch or redirect between depending on the device. Those in essence are your options for mobile development. Now, guidelines for what makes for a good mobile page. Um, now that we've set the scene, I, I think that's up, for, up to you to decide. All right, that, that's part of your assignment to do some research and, and figure that out. Any questions about this? Yeah, certain things. In other words, if I look at the HTML on this page, I think I only did it with the one thing here, but I certainly could do it with a bunch of things. I could make in any number of things. I put a class on a full or a class of hidden, and then through CSS I can show how. Classes like on an image file too. You could put classes, yeah, in, on anything. Yes. Yeah, in fact, that's why I made the height of this one zero pixels. All right, to to make to, so it didn't take up any space. That's a, a little little hack I did. Yeah, because yeah, essentially hiding it. What that does is that you know, yeah, I'm invisible. You can't see me. But if I make the yeah, if I make the height zero pixels, then it won't take up any vertical space. Yes. No. No, if the button is invisible, you couldn't still press it. 99% sure. 
you can test it and prove me wrong if you want, but uh, I, I don't think you can. Uh, through server-side code, by the way, um, again, this is because we don't do server-side scripting in this class, uh, my examples are geared towards doing things using client-side tools, that is CSS stuff. But keep in mind if you're using server-side code, you would simply not send the button to the page if, if, if you detected that it was a mobile one, if you didn't want the, the button there. Yes? How do you do the redirecting stuff? You do the, the redirecting stuff based on a couple of things. Let's pull this up. Uh, Repeat, please. The link where you got like the reference for all this, and then that Yes. Yes. Let's, for example, look at PHP. Let's look at what is in the PHP request object. All right. My mistake, I think in PHP is the environment. Yeah, that's what I want. Oh, that's deprecated. No, that one's deprecated. ENV is. Uh, let's see. Same page I was on. Yeah, let's see. All right, one of the things you can do is, ah, echo server, user agent. All right, this might be, I might have been looking in the wrong place. But you can get all kinds of information about, ah, here's a whole list of things. The browser name, parent, the platform, the browser, the version, the major version, the minor version, the CSS version, all kinds of different parameters about, uh, the browser uh, breaking the request has. So you can get, you have access to those within your PHP script. PHP, again, uh, we, uh, you know, is just one language. Other server-side uh, scripting languages would have uh, other, uh, would have a similar sort of thing where you can pluck from the request that actually makes it, that information. Then, once you have that, you can test these variables. So you can look to say, if I'm on a Mac, if I'm on Windows, show me the download link for the Windows version of the program. Otherwise, show me the download link for the, for the Mac version or Linux version. Then what you can do as far as redirection goes, you can just write a simple little script to go and redirect them to a different page. So essentially you'd have this in an if statement and 
you know, at the top of, of CNN's homepage, for example, you, will, you could have this code that would say, if the browser is such and such, if the platform is such and such, then redirect to the mobile version of the site. And the code would look like this. All right. Again, I don't spend tons of time talking about this because we don't talk about server-side scripting in this class, but I guess it is good to at least sort of mention the basics. All right. Other questions? All right. See you in lab. Or did you have a question? <laughs> okay, I guess not. <laughs> Everybody's like, ooh.